All right, welcome to our third video. This time we're talking about Vesper diagrams. Lewis structures are useful, but they don't account for the actual shape of the molecules. Really, they make you think that all the molecules are on the same plane, like they're all flat, and that's completely false. So they have their limitations, but when you really want to actually look at the shape, you need more. The shape of a molecule is determined by its bond angles, which are the angles made by the lines joining the nuclei of the atoms in the molecule. Uh, so as the angles change, which we'll talk about what they're depending on, the actual shape of the molecule will change as well. The Vesper model, which stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion, is what we use to determine our molecular shapes. It basically is, in summary, that the electron pairs in our valence shells, which means the outer shells, repulse each other. Hopefully, makes sense. Ultimately, it's more so based on the idea that electron domains, which are either bonding pairs of electrons or non-bonding what we call lone pairs of electrons. For example, in this molecule, that's an electron domain, one, two, three, four domains. They ultimately are negatively charged and will repulse each other. Meaning, try to get away. So the best arrangement of a given number of electron domains is the one that minimizes the repulsions among them. They really kind of, they push each other away and get to this kind of happy medium state, if you will. So in Vesper, we have two types of shapes that we're really concerned with. We have our electron domain geometries, which are the shapes of just the electron domains. And then we also have our more common ones, the molecular geometries, which are really what we tend to think of when we tend to think of shapes. Um, they are both important, so we'll be talking about them. The electron domain geometry deals with the arrangement of the electron domains about the central new atom of like an A, B to the N molecule, meaning molecules where there's typically one central and multiple atoms around it. And A is often considered the central, B will be those that surround and attach to A. For example, H2O, okay, well more so OH2 if we were willing to write it like that, or CO3. It's where there's typically one central and multiple atoms around it. We can use this in bigger molecules, but it really helps us start with kind of smaller molecules, if you will, that have a central and are surrounded by things. Molecular geometries are the arrangement really of only the atoms in a molecule or ion. So we don't care as much about the actual electron domains, and we really don't as much care about the non-bonding pairs. Now, the electron domains will help, it's just we don't really focus on them when we report this, if you will. To determine the Vesper shape of a molecule or ion, we have a few steps that are going to help you with. They will involve a decent bit of memorization, can't really help you much there. But our very first step is to draw the Lewis structure yay, of whatever molecule or ion we're dealing with. I have another video helping you make Lewis structures if you're unsure how to do this, but this is our very first step. Our second step is to count how many electron domains are on the central atom. Now, let me give you a few examples. Okay, in H2O, we have one, two, three, four electron domains. In carbonate, we have one, two, three electron domains around the central atom. Those are our first and second steps. Our third step is to determine the electron do domain geometry using the chart below. Now, it's actually not below this, it's on our next slide, but that's going to come down just to memorization. Get that memorized as soon as possible. But nonetheless, you have the number of electron domains, you have an idea of your electron domain geometry. Our final step, though, is to determine the molecular geometry from the electron domain geometry. Basically, what we're going to do 
is once you have the electron domain geometry, you kind of you have um, a grouping, if you will, of molecular geometries to look into. And what you do is you start dealing with how many bonding pairs and non-bonding pairs you have. For example, in H2O, we had four electron domains. But two of those were what we call bonding domains, which are this bond and this bond. And two of those are non-bonding domains, which is are these and these. They're areas that will find electrons. Two of those involve being bonded. Two of those involve not being bonded. So, we use that chart. We actually have two charts to look at, and that'll help us get our actual Vesper shape. All right. This chart helps us give an idea of actually what these molecules will look like in three-dimensional space. Okay? If we have two domains, we're going to form just a linear, basically a straight line. And the angle between that's just 180 degrees. It's the angle of a straight line. Okay? We typically call that linear. If we have three, it's going to be trigonal planar. They're all in the same flat plane and form a triangle. You end up having 120 degree, degrees between these. If we have four, we'll call it tetrahedral. So it's actually more um, like a triangular-based pyramid. We call it tetrahedral because there's actually four faces to it. Each of those angles would be 109.5 degrees. If we have five, it's trigonal bipyramidal. It's like we have two, tri two triangular-based pyramids. Um, one on top of another. We have 120 degrees within the actual tr triangle, but then all the others are actually at 90 degrees to each other. So there's actually two types of angles. And then our last one, octahedral. This is a eight-sided figure. Each of these angles are at 90 degrees, and that occurs when we have six electron domains. Finally, that previous chart will help us with electron domain geometry, but this following chart will help us with molecular geometry. Okay, so this is a list of the molecular shapes that we have. Looking up here, you'll notice a lot of these are actually very familiar. Well, at least they're the same names as electron domains. Linear, trigonal, pit, pit, planar, tetrahedral. And over here, what I'd like you to do is notice what the bonding domains and non-bonding domains add up to. If we only have bonding domains, for example, in our 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, then our molecular shape is the exact same as our electron domain shape. We have nothing else factoring in. Because the only thing the molecular shape does not add in are the non-bonding domains. So when we have no non-bonding domains, then it's going to look the exact same as the electron domain geometry. However, when you actually do have bond, non-bonding domains, it does change things a little bit. Um, like I said, best way is actually to memorize this. There are some very useful shapes online if you'd like to look those up, uh, but most of the time it's going to help to actually just deal with memorizing these. All right. To begin with, please notice I changed these two molecules from what I had in your notes. They really all ended up kind of being the same shape, so it's kind of redundant. So here's a few extra. I am not going to be drawing the Lewis structures for you in this. We have a separate video to help you do that. Um, but try these. Come back in a bit, and I'll actually show you the shapes. All right. So one thing that, first off, here are the shapes. May have thrown you off that we had six fluorines. That can happen. Um... Some elements are able to expand their actual outer octets, and sulfur is one that commonly does that. Basically, if they ever tell you, if they give you like five atoms or SF5 or SF6 type things, just assume that it's going to work. It's okay. With that, um, that finishes most of our molecular shapes. However, in large molecules, Vesper doesn't really help us determine the shape of a molecule. Though, it can allow us to determine the shape and especially the bond angles of individual atoms within that molecule. So, let's try that. What I'd like you to do is find the actual angle um, of the actual bonds associated with this atom, this atom, and this atom. What you're going to want to do is basically treat each of these um, almost as a molecule in and of themselves. They're their own central atom. So... Come back in a bit, and I'll give you answers. 
Alright. So, easiest way to do this, as you probably hopefully figured, count the electron domains. We have four here. That means we have an electron domain geometry of tetrahedral, 109.5. We have three. That is a trigonal planar, which gives us 120. And this is 109.5 because we have four domains, making it also tetrahedral. That's it. Thanks for watching.